Welcome to Promised Land Airways. I'm Captain Stewart and I'm your pilot today for this flight. We're going to be flying into the area around the Jordan River today. If you look out your window, you'll see perhaps the Lebanon Mountains, the Euphrates River, even the Mediterranean Sea as we travel. Now, I hope you'll just sit tight today. Make sure you buckle your seat belts, get into place. Uh, there may be some turbulence along the way. In addition, shortly we'll have the flight attendants come by. They'll swing out into the aisles and they will uh, be passing out some entertainment or some refreshments. And there will be some entertainment on your screen in front of you. And then, uh, unfortunately, I hate to tell you this, I know you're gonna be disappointed, but we're all out of mana for this flight. That got all consumed back in the wilderness. So sit back, enjoy the flight, and welcome and thank you for flying Promised Land Airways. All right, we're about to take off. So I hope right now what you'll do is reach into the seat back in front of you and pull out your safety manual, also known as your Bible. You know, it, it's a great safety manual because it guides us through the storms of life. It gives us information as to what to do in case of emergency. It also uh, has parts of it that will help set us for our course. And so make sure you've got your safety manual ready for you at all times. We're gonna be looking at it later today in the book of Joshua. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. Let's sing that again. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. May the God of hope Fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. And so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. May the God of hope Fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. And so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. May the God of hope Fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. You know, one of the things I like to do with one of our inaugural flights is to make sure you understand just a little bit about how Promised Land Airways works. And so, you know, as you can tell right up here, I'm in a very confined cockpit. And I can look out these windows behind me and I can see a limited distance. I can't see very far to the left or to the right. I can see only a certain distance in front of me. And then imagine what would happen if a storm were rolled in. Fog, clouds, or even trying to fly at night. My visibility is quite limited. Even if I happen to have a co-pilot sitting beside me here in the front of the cockpit, uh, I've got a helper up here. But again, between the two of us, we're limited in what we can see right now, what we can understand. But thankfully, when you fly with Promised Land Airways, it's more than just being controlled by the pilot. There's also another partner in our airline called an air traffic controller. And that air traffic controller is a critical, critical piece of our uh, communication because our air traffic controller sits back in a different location and from a much higher perspective and he's able to look down. He's able to see where this plane is going at all times. He can tell if we're off course. He can tell things that we can't see that are dangers in front of us. He can see obstacles coming off to the left or off to the right. And he can help guide us because he stays in constant communication with us. And that's the role of the air traffic controller. Can't you just tell what a vital role that is? Because we think we have skills sometimes in flying these planes, but it's critical for us if we're gonna reach our destination safely without any problems to maintain constant contact with that air traffic controller. And so that's what an important piece of our airlines and I just want you to understand how that works and we're going to talk about who serves in that role for you and I as we go through our spiritual lives as well. And today we're going to be looking at the book of the Bible called Joshua. It's called Joshua because it's about uh, or it's named after the leader of the nation of Israel in the time period that we're about to study. 
And Joshua did not fly an airline, but he did lead this large nation of people to go into the Promised Land. And although he did not have an air traffic controller that he was staying in touch with, he did have the one, the only, and the mighty, almighty God. And he turned to God and looked to God for direction and for guidance and wisdom for every step along the way as they go about this uh, Promised Land journey. And so we're going to sit back today. We're going to look at the book of Joshua. We're going to be in the first chapter. And so go ahead and grab your safety manuals. Let's get them out in front of you. And we're going to put it up on a flight screen before you. And we're going to look at Joshua chapter 1 and cover uh, the first five verses initially. And then we're going to go to verses 6 through 9. But before we get too far into this, I want you to turn to one of your friends around you here in the airplane, and I want you to talk about this question. What are some characteristics about God? What are some of the core attributes about who He is that makes you want to love Him and turn to Him even in the difficulties of life? Even when you're not sure where you're going or how it's going to be or how difficult it may be, we can count on God and we can trust God to guide us. And who are some of the, or what are some of the attributes about who He is that gives you confidence in doing that. So to discuss that with your friends for a moment, please. We're going to see today that we can be strong and courageous in the Lord and trust God even when it's hard or scary and we're not even sure where the final destination may end up. Let's look at Joshua chapter 1, we're going to read verses 1 through 5. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on the land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you." Wow! Did you hear all those things that the Israelites faced? And just think about what we already know about the nation of Israel at this point. They spent the last 40 years wandering around in the wilderness. They've been at this point before. They were about to cross over. They sent spies into the land. And guess what? Guess who one of those two spies was that came back with a good report? They sent 12. Only two came back and said, we can take this land and these people. 10 came back and said, there are giants in the land. It's impossible. We can't go do this. Two people, Caleb and guess who else? That's right, Joshua. Caleb and Joshua came back and said, we can take this land. Our God has promised to give us this land. Let's go forward and do it. But unfortunately, the people grumbled, they complained, they had fears and they had doubts. And because of that, God made the nation of Israel wander around in the wilderness for 40 years so that that generation would die off uh, and not get to inherit the promised land. So here they are 40 years later, facing the same challenge that their parents and their grandparents faced before, and they weren't able to conquer it because they didn't have the faith in God. Moses the leader who led them out of Egypt, the one who led them to the Red Sea and helped part the Red Sea by the power of God. Okay, that Moses is dead. He's there no more. The mantle is passed to Joshua. He is now to lead the people into the Promised Land. And that's where they are at this moment in time. Can you, can you imagine the fear that they have? Can you imagine how tired they are? They've been having manna over and over and over again till they're sick of it all the challenges of the wilderness, all because he didn't have faith the last time they were at this point, and here they are again. So think about that. They've been wandering around for 40 years. They're sad because Moses has died. They're scared because they still gotta go and conquer the people in this land and overcome their fears that held them back 40 years ago. And they're scared because their leader's gone. And they're tired, they're weary. Can you imagine how that must have felt? I'm sure right now some of you can identify with that out there at home. Raise your hand if you've been sad this last week. Thank you, thank you, yeah, I understand that. Raise your hand if you've been scared this last week over something. You know, lots of things in life can scare us, it's okay. I see those hands, thank you. 
Raise your hand if you're tired, just worn out and tired. Yeah? You know what? I understand all that. There have been so many times just in this last week that I have been sad over things that have been lost, been scared about challenges and obstacles that are ahead of me. And certainly there's lots of times this last week that I've been tired. And so I understand what that feels like. You know what? God also understands what that feels like. And he has some great words of encouragement for us today as we face those challenges in our life. So let's come back to our safety manuals. Let's look into Joshua chapter 1 and let's pick up in verses 6 through 9 and see what God says about being sad, scared, or tired as we face the challenges of life. So in Joshua 1 verses 6 through 9, be strong and courageous for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then, only then, will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. What do you think God's saying there? Did you notice a phrase that he keeps repeating over and over and over again to Joshua? You know, here's one of the truths that you can understand about these safety men. When God repeats himself over and over again, it's really important for us to get that and to understand that. What does he say? I want to hear you all tell me right now. You heard exactly what he said. What? He said, be what? <laughs> That's right. He said, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. We're going to come back and talk about what that means in just a minute. But right now, let's go ahead and jump to our memory verse that we're going to study. I think I've got a hunch you probably know which verse that's going to be. Memory verse, memory verse, memory verse, Shabbat! Memory verse, memory verse, memory verse, Shabbat! Ah oh, yes, a memory verse challenge. Woo woo! Have I not told you be strong and have strength of heart? Do not be afraid or lose faith. For the Lord your God is with you anywhere you go. Joshua 1 9. Great job, passengers. Our memory verse, Joshua 1 9. This is my command be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, we covered the what. Did you catch that? What is he supposed to do? He's supposed to be strong and courageous. Now we're going to look at both the why and the how. Three different times, God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. Now, he's telling him this again because it's very important for him to understand this concept. But what does this really mean? He's not talking about, Joshua, you need to start doing push-ups or you need to start lifting weights. He's talking about strength of character. That's what he's talking about. And now he's getting ready to explain why you can be strong in your character and how to be strong in your character. Choosing God's way and being strong in the right things. That's what we're talking about here as we look into this passage of Scripture. Why? What is he telling? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God, the creator of the universe, the one who made heaven and earth, the one who made you, he made me. He is with us in everything we do, in everything we face. No matter where we go, he is there with us. Just like the air traffic controller watches over me as I'm flying this plane, even if I'm flying at night, even if I'm not sure where we are, he's with me at all times. He's always there ready to answer any question I have. God is that same person for you and I, my friend. Okay? So we can have confidence. Why can we be strong? It's not because we're strong in anything that we can do. In our own, we're weak. But God plus one is always a majority. And that's what you and I have to tap into. God is always with us. And so because he is with us, we can be strong and courageous. So let me hear you say this with me. Repeat after me. I can be strong and courageous. <laughs> you can do better than that. Come on. Let me hear you. I can be strong and courageous because God is always with me. 
Let's say it one more time. I can be strong and courageous because God is always with me. Amen. What a wonderful truth that is, that God is always with us. That's our good news, that God is always with us. So that's the why. Now let's talk about the how. Did you notice what else he says here? You're going to see this over and over again as we go through the book of Joshua. God telling Joshua and the people of Israel to remember. Remember what I have done for you. Remember my commandments. Remember, 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 remember that I keep my promises. That's, that's the, that is the how. When we remember that God keeps his promises, we're able to be strong and courageous. How do we do that? Well, it requires us to study the safety manual. Did you notice what he says in verse eight? Study, study, not just glance at, not just occasionally read, not just go grab it when we're in danger, but actually know the manual before we get into danger. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you'll be sure to what? Now here's the catch, isn't it? It's not just enough to study it. We've got to meditate on it and obey. We've got to obey what it says to do in the safety manual. And only then will you be prosper, will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Only then can we safely count on arriving at our destination. Only then could the nation of Israel have confidence that they're going to be able to cross over this Jordan River. They're going to be able to go in and drive out the inhabitants and take what God has already promised to give them. God is faithful, my friends. He will always keep his word and he will always keep his promises. Sometimes it looks challenging. Sometimes it's hard for us to imagine how it's actually going to work. But trust me in this, God keeps his word. Study his safety manual. Spend time in it. Learn it. Meditate on it. Let it be a guiding path for you. That's how we succeed and that's how we prosper. To end today's flight, there's going to be a little game that we're going to play in just a minute. And so just sit back and enjoy the game. I'm going to give you some practical situations that you might face and I want you to answer what is the best way to be strong and courageous in that situation. One, at school, there's a kid that normally doesn't have anyone to play with during recess. How can you be strong and courageous? Option A, play with your own friends and hope that someone else will ask him to hang out with them. B, Tell the teacher that he is by himself so that the teacher will talk to him. Or C, invite him to hang out with you and your friends. I think C too. Number two, your baseball team has a game on Saturday. You're winning the whole time, but in the last inning, a teammate drops a fly ball and the other team scores a home run, which means they win the game instead. What is the best way to be strong and courageous in this situation? A, don't say anything mean to your teammate, but when they aren't around, you grumble and complain to people how bad that person played. B, tell everyone else on your team good game, but don't say that to your teammate who dropped the ball. Or C, remember how God always treats you with kindness and encourage your teammate that it's okay. Everyone makes mistakes, they are still a good player. I think C in this situation as well. We can be strong and courageous to our teammates by being encouraging to one another. The third situation and the final situation, number three. It seems like your parents are paying more attention to your brothers and sisters than they are you. When your sibling gets in trouble, how can you be strong in the Lord? A, pray for whoever got in trouble and don't make fun of them. B, go to another room and laugh about them getting in trouble. Or C, Make sure you bring up to your parents at dinner everything awesome you did around the house and at school that day. I think A as well. 
We can be strong and courageous by going to the Lord whenever we need help. You guys did great on that game. I hope you enjoyed that. It was fun sitting back here and watching all of you guys do that. We have lots of chances every day in life, day after day, week after week, to stand up and be strong, to be courageous in the difficult circumstances of life, to face obstacles and know that God's promised us something, but we still have to step forward in faith. And you've got those chances to do that. My prayer for you is that as you go forward through life, you'll be able to do that by remembering that God is with you, remembering that He keeps His Word, and studying His Word. Let me close this in prayer. Dear God, what a wonderful privilege it is to be able to call you Father. To know that as a Father you watch over us, that you love us, that you care for us, that you created each one of us for an eternal destiny with you, that you have a plan and a purpose for every day, every moment of our lives. That sometimes, Father, even that there are, though there are obstacles in front of us, even though we have spent time wandering in the wilderness in circles because we lacked faith at a previous point in time in our life or we rebelled, we just flat out rebelled and did not follow your word. Father, we know that you are a God who redeems, who restores and comes through. And we know that you keep your word. Father, I pray that you'll help us to spend time in your word, studying it, meditating on it day and night and obeying it, Father letting it permeate through every ounce of our being so we, we live and we breathe your word and we act based upon your word, Father. Help us to come to your word and find our, our guide through difficult times, uh, our safety manual, Father. Help us to just cherish it and to hide it in our hearts so that, Father, as we get to these challenges, as we face these walled cities, as we face these rivers we have to cross over, as we face the giants occupying the territory that you intend for us to occupy. Father, help us to be strong and to be courageous, to know that you are with us, that you will give what you have promised to give us, that you will deliver, that you will be the path through these things, Father, if we will only trust you, step out in faith, study your word, and keep it. May it be so, Father. We love you and help us to love you more. All these things I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.